Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are starting the Missing Linked Parts series of videos. That's right, we're finally diving into linked parts. And by the way, if you haven't noticed, I have finally switched over to Big Sur, so Finale 26 on Big Sur. Uh, so far, so good, minus the couple of visual uh, oddities that have been documented, but everything seems to be working smoothly. Um, but anyway, so we're looking at linked parts today, and this video is going to be sort of like a tour and an introduction of what they are and a few things about them, and then we'll get into more depth uh, in the coming videos. So starting with the most basic of questions, what is a linked part? Well, effectively, a linked part is an additional uh, layout of each individual part. So you see your score layout here. You can see all your parts together. And we have individual layouts for each individual part. And if you go into the document menu, the first two options deal with the score and the parts and their layout. So we're dealing with the edit score option right here, which is checked, which means that you're viewing the score. If you go to edit parts, you will see the list of all of the individual parts that exist in this file. And you can choose flute one, and that will take you to the layout for flute one. And you can go into here and you'll see now that that's checked, meaning you're viewing it. And you can choose any one you want, horn in A2. Uh, and et cetera, and all that stuff. And of course, you can always go back to the score just by choosing Edit Score here. Now, there is sort of a better way to navigate this, uh, which I use all the time, and I think it's it's a keystroke combination that's worth learning. On a Mac, it's Command Option plus the period key will scroll you forward uh, if you're in the score to the first linked part and then uh, continue to scroll you through the parts sequentially. So there's a bassoon one, bassoon two, horn and A1, horn and A2. So that's command option period. Command option comma will go backwards. So now horn and A1, bassoon two, bassoon one. Uh, again, so comma for backwards, period for forwards. And then command option slash, no matter where you are within the linked parts, will always take you back to the score. And if you're viewing the score, command option slash again will take you back to the last linked part that you were viewing. So that command option slash uh, keystroke is actually kind of handy because you can go back and forth between the score and whatever part that you're working on. All right, so that's a, a quick little navigation tip. Uh, command option comma period and slash. Now the basic premise of linked parts and why this is important in Finale is that the linked parts are well linked, which means that they will dynamically update as you make changes in the score. So for example, if we look at our flute one part here and you'll see the very first note is a B natural, but I can go in there and make that a B flat in the score. And what you'll see is that in the flute part, it will change to a B flat. So again, they dynamically update, and this is important. Obviously, you want your uh, parts to match your score. We can do it the other way too. In the part, we can change that C sharp to a C natural, and then go back to the score, and that second note is now a C natural. Obviously, this is the, you know, the benefit of having these parts linked together is that literally any changes you make here will be reflected in the part. Now, in addition to the, the pitches themselves and the rhythms and the data and all that stuff, a lot of the elements are also linkable and what uh, Finale calls unlinkable uh, items. So let's take this, this forte, for example. Um, and what I mean by this is the positions are unlinkable. So this forte is here. If I move it off to the left, uh, it will also move off to the left uh, in the part. Um, but there's a way in Finale to unlink the positions, and this is what the bulk of the next two videos are going to be about, because this is sort of the, the meat and potatoes of uh, this linked part system, is, is being able to move these things independently. So, uh, for example, I can go into the part here and change the position of this forte marking and put it all the way, I don't know, I could put it all the way over there, for example. And what you'll see is that it will turn orange, which means it's unlinked, and then in the score, it hasn't moved. So it is possible to have different positions for uh, elements between the score and part. And there's a lot of different things that can be linked and unlinked in this manner. And some of them behave differently. And there's just there's just a lot of, lot to cover. And it's really the, again, the meat and potatoes of dealing with linked parts is, is knowing how to deal with these linkable and unlinkable items. So the next two videos are going to be mainly focused on that aspect of it. Now, another thing to note is that the linked parts themselves, for obvious reason, will always appear in their transpose key. So if I go to my clarinet in A part here, you'll see obviously this is in the key of C. 
in the score, you know, your clarinet is, is still in the key of C, which means that this is a transposed score. But in Finale, we do have the option of displaying a concert key score. And the way we do that is to go into the document menu again, and there's an option here called display in concert pitch. So with this unchecked, you're in transposed score. Uh, just select it to check it, and now all of a sudden you're in concert key. So now your clarinet in A is in the key of A, your horns are in the key of A, and, and everything. The parts are still transposed. They will never not be transposed, and there's no way to actually display um, the part in concert score obvious, for obvious reasons. Uh, so just be aware of this. Uh, you know, if you're looking at transpose and you want concert pitch, this is where you do it, or vice versa. And uh, so that's transpose versus concert key score. So adding a linked part is pretty easy. 95% of the time, Finale handles this for you. And basically, all you really need to do is go into the score manager. If you want to add a part, let's say we're going to add a third flute here. So I'm just going to go in here. If you select the second flute, it always it will add the instrument below the one that you have selected. So we're going to go to uh, woodwinds. We're going to choose another flute here. Just add a third flute part. And you can see that I have flute three. And Finale will set these up automatically. In fact, if you go into the document and go to edit part, you will see not here, it'll put it down at the bottom flute three. The order in which these uh, instruments appear in this list, by the way, uh, are in order of, of when they were created, um, which is why this flute three gets put all the way at the bottom. Um, we can go into the Manage Parts window. Now I'm going to spend a whole video about this Manage Parts window. This is where we can literally manage these linked parts. We can change the names, we can change the makeup of the linked parts, what staffs are actually in the linked parts and all that stuff. Um, but one main thing that we can do if you get yourself out of order like this is in the left hand column you see your Flute 3 all the way down here. And these little arrow buttons will change the order, so it will just kind of uh, bring that upward. So you can bring that flute three uh, next to your other two flutes and just click OK. And now within this list, your flutes will be uh, in the proper order. Um, there's going to be a lot more said about this Manage Parts window. Uh, we can custom create parts. We don't have to create parts just by adding them. We can do all kinds of things here, including create parts with multiple staves uh, and all kinds of stuff. So, And also, there's a way to specify voicings in this window, which will allow you to do sh things with shared staffs. So if your flute one and two are on the same staff, you can parse them out to get different uh, individual parts with one line on each. That's a whole complicated lesson in itself but that's uh, uh, later down the road in this series. Now, another thing to realize is that uh, in the document menu, um, we have the page format for the score and the parts. I covered page layout in a whole series. Uh, I think it was number 21, Perfecting Page Layout. And I was mainly talking about the score, but the same lessons apply to the parts. The difference is that this page format for the parts applies to all of the individual parts simultaneously. Now, it is possible to have a linked part uh, just a single linked part with a different set of settings, a page size or, a, or a, um, a system size or whatever. You can do that individually, and basically all of those lessons that I talked about in the perfecting page layout uh, uh, lessons will apply you know if you use the overrides from the page layout menu I'm not going to spend too much time here I encourage you to go back to that uh, 21 perfecting page layout series and take a look at that because uh, I do talk about um, dealing with the linked parts a little bit in that as well but effectively the way that it works is that you kind of have one sort of default setting for the score and one default setting for all of the parts all together as far as page format is concerned now, in older versions of Finale, the whole linked part system didn't exist. This is relatively new. Well, relatively, I think it's at least 10 years old at this point. But uh, previous to that, Finale did a thing called extracting parts. And in the file menu, there is an option still for extracting parts. Now, this is similar to linked parts in that you're basically taking each individual instrument and creating a layout for it. But the main difference is that with the extract parts option, you're literally creating new files, new uh, Finale files, and the individual parts then become the score part of the file. In other words, the uh, you know the the page format for the score applies to that individual part on each single file. This was sort of the old way of doing this in Finale, and there are still some instances where this is actually 
uh, preferable to some people for very, very specific reasons. I'm going to talk about extracted parts in a later video just to kind of talk about that and show you what you can do differently between extracted parts and linked parts. Obviously, the huge disadvantage is that with extracted parts, they are literally no longer linked. So if you make updates to the score, you actually have to open the individual files and make those updates in those parts as well. But again, that's going to be a whole other lesson, extracted parts, uh, and uh, we'll talk about it then. And then one more lesson or one more set of lessons that I'm going to do is on uh, multi-measure rest. Uh, I figured these are kind of relevant to uh, actual linked parts, so it kind of made sense to throw these into these lessons. I think there's going to be two videos at the end on multi-measure rest just to round out this series. And then one final thing I want to talk about, uh, printing linked parts. So this may be slightly different on Windows computer, but on a Mac, if you just go to the print menu, um, we always get this little list of uh, the parts and the score here. So this is how we would actually print the parts. We have to check the ones that we want to print. So if you only wanted bassoon one to print, just check bassoon one. And we have all kinds of options here. We could check all and that will check them all or check none so that you can select a single one to do that. Or the check current option, which is really handy, which means it will check whichever one that you're viewing. So then you can print it. Just realize that if your score and your linked parts are on different size paper, you do you're probably going to have to do a separate run. So you know, check the score, you know, send uh, make it to legal or whatever size paper you're using for that, and then check all except the score, and then you can print all of your parts on letter or whatever you're using for that. So um, just a little a quick little tidbit about printing linked parts. You do get this list, and there's a couple uh, different things that you can do with that. All right, so there you go. We're well on our way to learning about linked parts. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful. And as I mentioned, the next couple of videos are going to be all about these uh, linked and unlinkable items here and how the positions can be affected between the score and the parts. It's really, it's really sort of the, um, one of the most important things about these linked parts lesson is learning how to manage these uh, items because uh, you know things are going to collide differently between the score and the parts. So you're going to want to ha have a, a good knowledge about how to do this and do it efficiently. So that will be the next couple of lessons and I'm looking forward to it. All right, so once again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you soon on the next lesson.